Okay, take three. <sighs> okay. I want to talk a little bit about spirits, about levels of awareness, engagement, um, language, like uh, original language, um, and then also fever. Uh, being sick <clears throat> because I'm kind of going through this right now um, which doesn't really surprise me because of the energies lately uh, just the engagements with people um, and then also like overeating on turkey day uh, but also the things that I ate <laughs> keep pressing that uh, which I don't eat meat but there were some uh, some noodles there that I really really wanted to try and, and have and uh, it was loaded with turkey so I was like well I'll get as much turkey out of it as I can, and if I ingest some, then so be it. Like, it's not going to kill me. I'm, I know I'm going to be able to metabolize it. Uh, and not have, like, long-lasting negative effects from it. But, uh... No, that, my Thanksgiving was, was pretty good. And, I don't know, I guess that was kind of surprising, but, I don't know, I just went with it. It was nice, I had some nice conversations with people. I, uh, kind of threw out some, some names for people to, to look into, so, uh, kind of planted some seeds. And it's always interesting to see the kinds of people that pay attention to you whenever you talk about certain things and then those other kinds of people who are are triggered by that and they'll either kind of shut off, look away, remain silent, or you can tell like their inner angst and they're agitating and they're just trying not to explode and get all emotionally triggered. And so that's always fun kind of have to know when to hold. And that's also something that I'm not used to really, well, first of all, talking to people in general. And uh, I usually just try to go for those one-on-ones because I feel like I can engage with some deeper stuff with people. Uh, we can We can enter into a space where they will eventually, if not immediately, they will eventually realize that it is okay for them to be, uh, to open up around me. Like, they're safe to do that. And then we can get into deeper healing, deeper level stuff for them. And it's always going to have uh, certain levels to that. So whenever I'm around, like, a crowd or even a third party, like, ooh, it depends upon the level of awareness with, with the people. So a lot of times I'll be talking to someone and then the third party or more will come in and it's like, ah, can't continue this now, but so far another time because these people are going to be triggered or have to butt in or, or something to uh, disturb the flow, disturb the space of, of, uh, of vulnerability that has been uh, achieved. And I also have experiences throughout my life with mm, just, just with myself in meditation. Uh, and it doesn't matter where I'm at. It really, I've come to finally uh, understand, like, I don't need to necessarily go outside of the town or... And, and, into the middle of nowhere, into the middle of the woods, 
to access these deeper places. Yes, I recommend that for people if they want to meditate, if they want to get back into uh, really getting in touch with themselves, with their own inner nature, like expose yourself to the outer nature, to, to the truth out there, uh, away from the city and the artificial shit, away from all the frequencies. Surround yourself with the natural frequencies and, and the, the book of life. And maybe, hopefully, if you can still yourself enough, you'll open yourself up and, and start to interact and engage with and remember how to read from this living book that's all around. The language that is spoken in nature. You can, you can learn that language and tap into that. So yeah, like it, it doesn't, I've been in the middle of the woods and um, other places and it doesn't matter, like some energy uh, always finds me. And that in and of itself has been traumatizing for me to enter into these deep modes, very deep modes and states of being, tapping into my original essence and then having that raped and stolen from me. And I say raped, like that hasn't happened to me, but I've been in those modes to where this other energy comes in and that's that's their desire to to rape that not only disrupt and distract but to enforce themselves upon me so whenever i'm in those states um, I'm, I'm operating on like uh they're playing like you know checkers and i'm i'm operating on like you know 5d chess so I have to be careful that I don't tr super trigger them because they're already triggered, but I have to pull it back in and kind of come back down on their level a little bit. And this isn't anything derogatory or anything. This is just how it is. Like it, a lot of us uh, have this issue with communicating deeper level stuff with people like we have to bring ourselves down to certain levels i've been around uh several different kinds of people who uh uh enjoy the alcohol the spirits and yes a lot of the times uh too much but uh they all have that same message for me i've noticed of uh you know I need these kinds of things in order to come down and be able to communicate with like normal people. And until you really like tap into that for yourself and understand it, like you're just gonna like, oh yeah, you're just that's just an excuse for you to drink. But once you kind of engage that yourself and understand understand it, or even see their modes of being whenever they're not on certain things, it's like, ooh, you you might have a point there because you are going very fast and most people aren't going to be able to keep up with that. Press that button again, I'm still going. So uh, I understand uh, where people are coming from, but it, it can be a crutch though. Like you have to realize if something is benefiting you or not. So I wanted to kind of uh, talk about some of the things I've been doing lately with uh, deeper cleansing. Uh, I've been utilizing certain spirits at the end of my fast this last time just for a deeper cleansing. Uh, and this is what I used at first. The Jaeger with the 56 botanicals is you know, cold macerated essence refined in oak 
and uh, yeah, and then Germany, you know, they create quality shit as well, uh, especially uh, their craftsmanship with glass. Like that's um, some of the t most top level stuff you're gonna find. But I want to talk about how my cat um, was drawn toward the Jaeger. And this was like the only alcoholic or even like stronger liqueur or liquor. This is 35%. And she was uh, drawn towards it and she kept smelling it. So uh, that was interesting to me. And then of course you know the myth with uh, Jaeger having deer blood. So I mean for my cat to, uh, this is the only alcohol that she's ever had that response to with. Um, so it kind of made me <laughs> rethink about that, rethink that, like is that really a myth or not? But I also kind of looked into uh, some of the history with Jaeger. Um, that means uh, master hunter and like the story behind it of that that hunter at the time um, just kind of doing what most hunters do today which is uh, hunt for a sport and uh, a lot of times they don't even use the meat so that's kind of disgusting the whole act is disgusting anyways, and a lot of times when you get right down to it with a lot of hunters, they will admit that uh, their favorite part about it is just, you know, that engagement with being out in nature. Because of what it what it does, like whenever you're, be, whenever you're out in nature, you, you, you find that solitude. You're able to find that peace, and kind of go within and... Not only go within, but whenever you're out in nature, it's uh, that that outer nature reminds you of your inner nature, and you realize like the interconnectedness there. So to me, it's always like you know, you're admitting this. So how come you can't just go out and have that experience without you know, killing stuff? And I understand it's uh, a lot of it's habitual, like growing up and being raised in that, and that's how I was as well, until I finally uh, kind of stepped away and, and looked at some of these experiences I had with killing these animals and uh, uh, being honest with myself about how that made me feel. And uh, I just, you know, it probably kind of coincided with me stop, uh, quitting meat as well, for the most part. So yeah, and also I want to talk about uh, whenever your pets are drawn towards a certain herb or spice or food, um, not only is this going to show you that your pet is in need of something inside of that for their own selves, but a lot of the times with people and their pets, and you'll notice this with people and pets, like the mannerisms and uh, a lot of times people almost, or their, and their pets will almost resemble one another. It's a little scary sometimes to witness. But uh, I feel like a lot of a lot of the microbiome and the bacterium, they're, it's going to be shared with indoor pets. So if your pet is drawn towards something, listen to that. And that most likely is going to be something that you yourself need as well. So I kind of took that as a good sign with the Jaeger, and uh, I had some uh, very intense meditations with it. Um, some visual stuff happened that I'd never experienced before, or at least don't have immediate access memory to that. But then also, I've been trying the gin for the first time, really getting into that.
and that has a uh, I've noticed that has a unique effect for me at least um, I haven't really tried to get drunk or even get a buzz off of it I just use it for like cleansing purposes and even when I was off my fast and continue using the gin um, it always just cleared away um, the previous stuff that I had drank and kind of accessed this more of a cl clear mindset for me. So it's been very interesting experiencing the effects of gin. Um, so far it's uh, only been beneficial because I have, <laughs> I have yet to overdo it with the gin. And also, with this fever and being sick mode, I notice that uh, my body metabolizes things very strangely, especially alcohol. Um, it's almost like it's very difficult for me to, uh, if I desire to catch a buzz off of alcohol, um, it's damn near impossible once my body reaches a certain point of how it metabolizes things. And so that's always very interesting as well. And just wanted to talk a little bit about the fever mode, the, the fever, this, the being sick. I, I, I don't ever really get sick all that often anymore. If I do, it's gone within, you know, less than a day or, or it's very intense. Like, uh, <laughs> extremely intense to where, like, you know, I don't know, most people would think that they're dying and, and go to uh, a hospital in the ER and whatnot. But for me, and my uh, past experiences with the fever, um, I have grown to enjoy it. Um, not always, like, the hellish parts and whenever it's painful, say like with inflammation and stuff, but um, realizing the things I draw upon being being sick or having a fever, the the modes, the certain thoughts that I have, um, I'm able to access different things because my body's awareness, my emotions within the felt body change and so also how I engage the mind changes as well so I'm able to access certain things and experience certain things um, if you want to call it manifestation or visualization uh, that changes very rapidly for me it becomes very instantaneous and you can call that imagination the visualization, hallucination, but it's, there's no such thing as that word. And a lot of the words that we have and have been grown into and taught to use, uh, they're dead. They, they don't exist. They are illusions. They are a f story that, uh, is not the case because that's not how reality works with a, with this language it's, it's kind of like it wants you to choose a side this or that and it's easy to objectify things and using the word it when in reality like everything is living so it's just a question upon the level of life within something it's all a flow. That's why poetry is so uh, beautiful to listen to and engage in, because that's a, a living language. And it's the same whenever you go out in nature, you, you experience that living language for yourself. So... Whenever I was young and would have intense fevers, 
I I enjoyed them. And yeah, this is kind of sad, but it is what it is. And maybe this did influence how I would engage that fever mode later on, how I would uh, learn from it. But uh, whenever I was young, I would enjoy it because um, it would be one of the rare times that I would feel like I'm actually getting attention from my parent. Um, and, um, feeling like they actually uh, are concerned with, with me, with my being. Um, maybe actually feel some kind of love from them. But then also, I would experience uh, certain things in the fever mode when I was very young, such as see seeing spirits, um, you could say disincarnate spirits, but you could also say Trying not to say too much, but not too little. Um, certain energies that exist right on the threshold, right on the realm of what you're able to see or experience or perceive. So once you tap into the fever mode or being very sick, um, those lines blur and uh, things are able to come in and you're able to actually see them as if they are there. I mean, yes, they are there, but maybe not so much in a physicality, physical form. And uh, later on, you may or may not come to realize that you are the thing that allows them to come in and to have power. You are the power source. You are the battery. And these things feed off of you. So, another interesting experience I've had whenever I've been in fever modes is not only a acceleration of time and imagery, and sometimes yes, a control of that, and, and also blurring the lines between the dream realm and the waking realm. These are kind of common things with uh, entering fever moods, or even in, I say fever mode, but it's also something you tap into with uh, intense meditations, intense spirit therapy, or spirit medicines. But one of the things that has happened with me is a sphere. It's almost like a pixelated living sphere of energy will enter into my room and be right around the doorway, kind of stay within the doorway, maybe a little bit closer to me. And from what I remember, it's around three, three and a half feet in diameter. And this living sphere, um, the language isn't, it's all emotion, it's, it's very intense emotion, it's like the most intense psychedelic you could ever take, um, it's beyond that. For, for me, this is what my experience was like. And uh, quickly, intuitively, immediately realized that this thing, whatever this was, like, it was me. And not only was it me, it felt more like me than what I felt like. Which is a very bizarre thing to feel. So I, I'm not for sure. And I've had this happen several times throughout my life. So it's, just, it's very interesting. It's during these fever modes. So it leaves me the question. Is, you know, is this myself checking up upon myself to make sure, you know, I'm not dying or I'm going to make it or something. Um, but then after it stays for a minute and then leaves, like, uh, 
as it's leaving, there's this feeling of being absolutely terrified because it's like myself is leaving, my true self, my, my soul is leaving. And uh, I, I imagine it's kind of like whenever someone is dying and they don't, they're not, they don't understand that process. They don't understand that their true self is leaving the body, which is what they thought they were, just the body. And yeah, that can be a terrifying thing. Until until you have more engagement with that and you're able to understand what's going on, what you really are. So the earliest memory I have with this fear, it left and I was young and I, I ran after it. I ran into the living room where my parents were and I just kind of stopped with a blank, blank look on my face and they were just like, what's going on? Are you okay? I was like, no, like, I didn't have any words or anything to describe this. So I don't know. I, I just went back to my room, I guess. But it's happened several times throughout my life. And uh, the later, the latter one that I remember is probably when I was around 18 or so have in this fever mode. And, uh, and having that happen. And this was at a different location as well, a different house. Having these same uh, feelings. But it's, it's very interesting to witness how my body metabolizes certain chemicals, uh, certain emotions, certain experiences, certain ideas, whenever I'm in certain moods. And beyond the fever mood, I've, I've entered into like deeper levels of meditation, um, engaging that inner fire in your core, in your abdomen, in your tantian, and uh, engaging that to such an extent to where any chemical that you put in your body, uh, it's quickly burned away. And I would imagine that you could experience this as well with uh, over oxygenating your system using the Wim Hof method. You will probably have similar experiences. So yeah, those are just some of the things I wanted to mention. Um, And also, like, with language, and our original language. Tapping into the emotion and the imagery. And you can be around certain people where you don't, like, both of you know, like, you don't need to talk. You just have that connection. You, you both know. And it's not even necessarily what both of you are thinking because that doesn't even matter. It's, it's what you're both feeling. Your mind has melded in with the emotion in the heart and that's where you both connect and you're able to communicate on that level. And all it takes is a simple uh, look in the eyes and uh, lifetimes will be communicated. So this is also something I wish to kind of uh, ex expand upon in later videos is uh, tapping into that true communion with, with one another beyond the words. So yeah, I guess that's it for now because uh, I've tried to do this three times now so I don't really, <laughs> I can't really remember if I have talked about certain things on this one or if it was from the last one, so you know, we'll just end it right here. But uh Yeah, thank you.